Okay, so your your career is developing. You're doing TV stuff, but you're also doing stand up a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, your thing is that you take your shirt off. Yeah. Now, usually when guys take their shirt off, they have a nice six pack and <laughs> they're well built. They've been working at the gym. They may have gotten some lipo. You, on the other hand, just let it all hang out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, fat guys take their shirts off all the time at home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I wish I could tell you I knew why it happened or how it happened. I remember I remember the first time it happened for an extended period of time. So I used to just get on stage, rip my shirt off, kill a beer, come out to um, Black Betty by Ram Jam. It was a way for me to like remind myself that I'm supposed to be having a good time. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of comics, and myself included, you get on the road and you, you're doing a full weekend and that's your life and no one's coming out and... You don't feel yourself making any forward movement. Some people get jaded and their acts get angry. And then, then you're not never going anywhere. And for me, it was like, remind yourself that you're here to have a good time. That you want to have a good time. And that, and that this is supposed to be fun for them and for you. And so I'd rip my shirt off, I'd kill a beer. I mean, I'd kill a beer. I remember at times I'd kill six beers in a row before the show even started. <laughs> okay. I, remember, I remember doing it, looking at the manager in the back going, one more? Because I'd, I'd come up with a bucket. you go through the bucket in the show. And then one night in Columbus, I took my shirt off and something organic happened in the room and my energy sh focused there. And then like 15 minutes later, I realized, oh, I haven't put my shirt back on. Like it's on the mic stand. So I grabbed it and this woman in the back goes, keep it off. I was like, really? And she goes, keep it off. And they're like, yeah, keep it off. So I kept it off. I get off stage and this comic that I really respected goes, hey man, I couldn't do one joke with my shirt off. You just did an hour with your shirt off. Uh. And I was like, really? Now in my head, I thought this, right? I work on the road with my shirt off, and when I go to do a special, when I put my shirt on, that material that works shirtless is going to destroy with a shirt on. Like in my head, I was like, when they, I deliver it like a regular comic does, they're going to be like, oh, this guy's amazing, because I got this, I'm killing with like, with, with, I'm swimming with overalls on with doing shit shirtless, and then I go to do the Showtime special, and I realize I've been performing with a shirt on for like nine years, and I'm not comfortable in shirts on stage, and I'm like literally... Literally, like, going, I think I'm going to do my special shirtless. Showtime was like, I think that's a horrible idea. And they're like, you are literally giving people a reason to change the channel. Like, you're literally saying, oh, by the way, if you're not into this, if you think this is going to be annoying, it's like this the whole time. And uh, they were right. They were really right. No one watched that special on Showtime. Which was... Uh, the Machine. The Machine. However, serendipitously, as marketing works sometimes, best when you're not paying attention to it, I tell the machine story on that on that video on that mm -hmm. special. I post it on Facebook that December. I post the whole machine story at like the perfect time to, on December twenty seventh. And at that time, I mean, this is like you couldn't have come up with this plan. New Year's and Christmas fell on like a Tuesday and a Wednesday or something that way. So people had like a legit two weeks off for the holiday. Like no one worked for two weeks. I posted it right in the middle of that. And I'm shirtless. And so that story goes viral because it's a great story, but I'm shirtless. So all of a sudden, I am branded, like, recognizable in this way that I had not, it was not my intention, but all of a sudden you're like, shit. And then, and then it goes viral. And I remember, being at a, I remember being at a bar at LAX and this girl comes up and goes, beautiful girl goes, hey, I know you. I know you. And the bartender's like, hey. And I was like, you definitely don't know me. She's like, no, I know you. How do I know you? I said, I... I don't know, I'm from Florida. And she goes, no, no, no. How do I know you? I I didn't recognize you with your shirt on. And the bartender <laughs> lights up. He's like, you fucked her? And I was like, oh, no, no, I performed shirtless. She goes, hey, you're the machine guy. The, the fucking Russian mafia. The I machine go, yeah. guy. Yeah, so it was. It worked out. Yeah, because on your, on your uh, YouTube channel, that uh, machine skit is at like 33 million or something. something 33 massive. million there. I think it's like 40 million over on Facebook. And yeah. Then, and then what's amazing is once you get a video that goes viral, content creators, those those guys that are recyclers, mm -hmm. they grab it, post it on their page. I remember one dude got 80 million views of that, of that video. Hmm. And I was like, I wanted to thank him, but he was like a nameless, faceless dude. Like he just didn't have, he just was a guy that grabbed content, posted it. And, and, they, and the thing they posted was uh, block lettering on top and bottom of it was, this is a true story. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> That's what, that was like the blocking on it.